Okay, hi everybody. Let's uh, let's get started. This is Clarice Tafe Hedlund, uh, IT architect with IBM Systems, and I'm going to talk about AI at scale in the enterprise. So our agenda today will be to uh, cover the state of uh, data analytics today, what we mean by the AI ladder and life cycle, some of the themes that we see coming back in um, AI in the enterprise, some infrastructure considerations and a couple examples. So traditionally data analytics has been from the very simple uh, spreadsheet type of data collection with uh, no governance, no collaboration, and limited complexity, all the way to um, specialized applications um, like CRMs and ERPs that have um, some level of analytics but are typically hard-coded or uh, driven by business rules to, um, to do the analytics. Um, some of the homegrown applications that you see also take this approach of preset rules and what this means is that um, a lot of the analytics a piece of it is hard-coded and uh, not very flexible. So the idea is to introduce AI into these systems and have uh, greater dynamic use of, uh, of tools to analyze your data. The idea is to go from um, something that's very descriptive and static in terms of what has happened to uh, coming up with some predictive models of what will happen that drive into prescriptive models of what we should do. And finally, in this cognitive era, what can we learn dynamically in terms of what has happened, what will happen, and what we can do. And so have the systems learn uh, based on, on past uh, knowledge and on information that's uh, input dynamically and learned directly by the systems. So the idea is to go from data to action and reducing the amount of human input as you go from that data to action and have more and more of the system being able to guide us to the right decisions and the right actions based on the data insights. Some common patterns relative to that um, data analysis is tied to um, planning activities where you're looking at forecasting and uh, budgeting based on past activities, how you're going to move forward to predict future events. And this is where you can start looking at supervised versus unsupervised learning and um, use new techniques such as deep learning and natural language processing to come up with better insights as you move towards your um, journey in uh, building a more sophisticated data analytics set of patterns. In terms of structured versus unstructured data, um, these are some of the uh, examples that we talk about when we uh, look at some of the most common patterns and use cases. With uh, structured data, you have um, some traditional analytics with uh, lots of rows and columns, a lot of, a lot of feature, um, feature engineering where you're determining um, some rules-based views of your data or looking at um, very specific uh, columns and labels for, for your data. You get a lot of accuracy as you um, are able to develop better feature engineering and you get better and faster results as um, you can use GPU servers, uh, GPUs on servers to, uh, to accelerate your compute part for this. The second type of use case is typically um, unstructured data like um, images, that's computer vision models. And this is where deep learning techniques and algorithms come into play. And um, a model is learning to detect objects classify objects, um, classify images, um, do um, um, action detection, segmentation. And um, the vision models can take a broad um, spectrum of use cases where it's not just pixels and images as we think about them, but basically anything that you can transform into a representation of, um, 
of an image. So that includes satellite data, infrared data, sound, uh, spectrography, basically anything that you can uh, apply deep learning techniques to uh, matrices of data, you can apply these, uh, these algorithms. And then the final category of use cases is around uh, natural language processing. And this is um, a lot of um, techniques that have developed to, to really get a better understanding for speech to text and text uh, processing uh, word to vec model, for example, um, is uh, a very popular use case in that space. And of course, these are all applied to uh, different industries. Um, I'm sure you've all seen examples across uh, basically every industry where you can look at um, AI as a, as a builder of improving your, your insights. So whether it be fraud and banking, safety inspection or uh, manufacturing quality inspection process improvements, and of course, defense and security um, have plenty of use cases as well. So we know that it's one of the fastest growing workloads. And um, what we're gonna talk about today is not just building the models or training the models, but how these models apply in the uh, enterprise and how it really is truly an end-to-end uh, view, view of the world. So we talk about um, the AI ladder in IBM. There's been some, uh, some books recently published on this as well. And the idea is it starts with data. You need to collect your data, make it simple and accessible. You need to organize it, know what your data is and create a trusted foundation for that data. Then you need to be able to analyze it. This is where building models and iterating on that process and making sure you've got trust and transparency in those models. And then finally, being able to apply those models because without that, you're really not leveraging um, the benefits of the model. So the idea is to infuse. We sometimes talk, talk about deploying the model or inferencing, and that's basically putting AI models and applying them across your, um, your business processes. So it starts with the data and it ends with being able to apply it in your processes in your enterprise and then it iterates um, from there. So when I say data, I mean any type of data. So not just traditional enterprise data like transactional um, data and application data. We're also talking about sensor data, other uh, enterprise com content coming from various parts of your data center, your infrastructure, images, geospatial data, sound data, um, videos, social data, weather pattern data, third party data, any type of data that you can come, come up with that will give you insights into your, uh, into your business. And those are applied to come out with uh, outcomes and those range from chatbots, supply chain optimization, assembly line quality inspection, pricing, recommendation engines, risk, fraud, decision uh, support, um, vision systems, autonomous systems like uh, autonomous driving um, or even autonomous yachts these days, uh, behavior modeling, uh, sentiment analysis, all those types of applications that are emerging uh, leverage the data that sits in your enterprise and outside of your enterprise. When we talk about the end-to-end uh, -end process and the pipeline, if you look at it from a data perspective, you really are starting with data coming in, typically from edge devices or at the edge or at the consumer or client level. You then ingest the data, organize, analyze, do your runs with uh, training of machine learning, deep learning models to gain insights. And at every step of the way, you've got some data patterns that emerge that require a, uh, a full data and AI architecture. And the idea here is that the different types of data 
that you need and the different types of activities that um, you're uh, needing that data for will drive some of this uh, data architecture. Whether it's transient storage, when you're bringing data in or ingestion, how you're doing the ingestion, whether you need um, a performance tier to support that because you're ingesting um, real time or how you organize your data, whether you can leverage metadata and tagging of your data, such as um, location, size, and any kind of information that goes along with your data, and how you uh, extract, transform, and load your data also drives your, uh, your storage requirements and how you're going to use your data for your models. Finally, you get your data into a state that you're going to be able to bring it in and push it back out as you leverage your trained AI models and archive your data as you need to um, as uh, a byproduct of that. And then finally, as I mentioned before, everything is very iterative. So everything that you go through uh, one pass to train a model and then to leverage that trained model, you're going to want to um, have a quick and organized and way to take that data and um, evaluate it again and see if you need to update your models, update your business processes and how you use the models um, as a result of, of new data that's always coming in and corrections to the models that are always coming in. So I mentioned already a little bit about the data piece. The training piece is the, um, the, the part where you're developing the models where you uh, really need to have a good understanding of what problem you're trying to solve and uh, a good way to validate and trust your models to make sure that uh, what you're building is, uh, is going to be useful in solving your business problems. And then finally, when you're ready to, um, to deploy the model, you're going to look at the types of uh, key performance indicators and uh, performance uh, uh, metrics that you need to make sure that your model is being used the way you you intend it to be used. This also drives a lot of um, skills work that goes on, whether it's um, data scientists or data engineers up front to uh, IT operations and DevOps folks um, at the inference level that are building your models you need a new way of communicating with these teams and a new way to um, manage the iterative um, process of how, how this is working. So we're seeing a lot of uh, changes in, in process flows and end-to-end -end, um, workflows as a result of the communication that needs to happen between, um, between the various parties. So the, um, the piece of code that we typically talk about when we're talking about AI is very often thought of as the, um, the training, the building the model, and that's, in a sense, the fun part. Um, but when you're deploying this in an enterprise, there are many, many other pieces that need to factor into this, um, into this process, um, starting from the data side in terms of how you collect the data, uh, feature ext extraction, data verification, having the right tools and the right processes to manage um, the models makes a big difference. Um, how you deploy in terms of resources, system resources, whether it's uh, in the cloud, on-premise, or hybrid solutions, understanding um, how all those pieces come together, how they're monitored, and how you maintain security, privacy, and governance all take an uh, important role in how you deploy an, an AI solution in, in the enterprise. The pillars of trust for this is also uh, critical. We see this in the news as well. Uh, factoring how you're using AI in, in your enterprise is, is critical. Is, is it fair? Is it easy to understand? Is it secure? Is it accountable? So all these pieces are components of, uh, of an enterprise deployment that need to come into play before a full uh, production deployment. 
Now, coming back into where open power plays and infrastructure matters is, is the fact that through that workflow, um, you can't be slowed down by any piece and you can't uh, ignore any of the pieces. So it is important to have um, a good understanding of your pipeline and to, and to understand where your bottlenecks might be and to have an infrastructure that's built to support the types of compute storage and network requirements that are required for your uh, AI deployment. When we talk about deployment relative to, um, to that end-to-end -end workflow, some of the considerations to, to factor in are um, what happens at the front end in terms of ingestion. Um, are we able to keep up with, um, with the uh, performance and the scale of your data coming in? Is it secure? Do you have a good uh, tiered architecture that puts the focus on the type of storage that you need for the type of data that you're storing? In terms of the model piece, you're looking at um, understanding whether your data has um, uh, metadata that you can leverage and do you have a good system for uh, making sure that that's uh, well communicated and accessible? Do you have a single namespace uh, file system if that's what um, you need to access your data in, inside your data lake or directly for, uh, for training a model and doing the data prep? And uh, at the edge, do you have um, sufficiently low, low latency systems that get you um, the, um, the information that you need from your trained models um, fast enough? When we talk about some of the uh, infrastructure needs, they are different, whether it's for training or inferencing of AI models. Um, training typically needs um, uh, fast accelerators, um, and typically a lot of systems if you can uh, leverage training uh, in parallel, high, high bandwidth, IO and low latency, and um, some uh, data center support for, for those systems. For inference, uh, you, you may need um, faster latency, you may need to be able to distribute your data um, your models and um, your applications across um, multiple data centers. Um, scalability also matters here. And um, you may also need a, a wider variety of, of flexible storage solutions, depending on um, the data demands of, uh, of your applications and the uh, model inference that's taking place. Some of the uh, typical inferencing scenarios um, can be uh, on-prem or in cloud or hybrid. Um, and it can be at the data center level, at a server, individual server level, and can also be um, on standalone devices and uh, on ed edge, edge devices um, connected back to servers. When you're looking at um, the, your inferencing considerations, you're still looking at uh, your model accuracy as the outcome of your trained models. Um, accuracy meaning a wide range of things depending on your business needs. It could be um, recall, it could be something else. But the key here is to um, look at all the different pieces that, that matter to you when you're deploying an inferencing uh, solution. Are you doing uh, real-time inferencing versus batch inferencing. How much do you need to scale? What type of data are you feeding into your inference engines? What, um, what security is required? Um, are you running a multi-tenancy uh, environment? Are you um, supporting multiple tools, multiple applications? And how are you keeping track of all of this, whether it's um, the model management, the data management, the resource management, and systems management in general. And finally, as I mentioned before, the trust and transparency so that um, everything is always explainable.
So when you put all this together, um, a, a typical um, architecture um, might look like um, transactions coming in or sensor data, emerging IoT information coming in, um, feeding into um, operational database and modern databases, um, such as MongoDB or data lakes, where you've got this whole data governance component that comes in. This is also where you might um, focus on metadata tagging and, and management and basically building out uh, a, a knowledge databases. Then you've got a data science workbench. This could be open source tools. It could be um, other uh, prepackaged uh, training uh, instruments. Basically, it's where the data scientists uh, work and develop the models. And then finally, you could have uh, an AI grid or a um, as a service model in the cloud that um, manages your, your inference and does the, um, the model um, deployment for that. So we do see um, uh, an emerging platform for AI that um, talks about co-location and where hybrid cloud um, play, plays a role and uh, manages the, uh, the different uh, application requirements relative to the AI deployment. So an example of this um, in, in manufacturing would be um, an initial factory location um, would do a, uh, a proof of concept, um, would collect data to build an initial model, would um, iterate on that model, um, make sure that the model itself meets the uh, KPIs of the business for, for that model. And there would be some work to uh, integrate it with um, the application pieces. In this case, it might be uh, a robotics um, communication with, um, with the outcomes of the model to take certain actions. And you would have um, servers and um, storage to, uh, to manage all that at, at the factory uh, level. Once you're happy with that uh, proof of concept and uh, maybe even the initial deployment into production, you would then um, be able to bring that in um, in a more centralized area and cloud environment where you can automate more of the uh, 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 model deployment and roll that out to, uh, to multiple factories and then use the incoming information that comes back in to, um, to manage dashboards on, um, on overall uh, performance, business, um, business application performance that have these AI components in them, and then feed that back into um, new, new, um, new systems um, and new up updates for, for your models and, and your inferencing. Um, a specific example that, that we've used um, using some, some IBM tools that were um, basically taking some of the open source ideas and packaging them up so that you didn't have to have deep data scientist skills is, um, is something called that IBM Maximal Visual Inspection, um, which basically looks at inspection points within a, a supply chain and you build models that look for specific um, anomalies or quality uh, defects at specific stations, and you feed all that back in in an automated way from uh, um, iOS devices that feed back into uh, dashboards and basically look at um, uh, actions to take based on um, triggers that, that you see um, when you've got a, a defective part, for example. So in summary, um, putting AI um, in the enterprise is not, is not just about building a model, 
It's about thinking of all the pieces that have to go into uh, being able to get to deploy a model. And it starts with um, understanding the use case and how you might be able to leverage AI, making sure that you've got the right data to train and um, accept new data to inference um, those models. It's just a piece of the overall workflow and the trusted component of it and the governance is uh, truly critical to get into production. Uh, finally, infrastructure does matter. Being able to have um, the right resources at the right time in the right environments um, is all something that needs to be thought out as you deploy uh, an AI architecture. And as I said, um, at one uh, earlier is that collaboratively, this is uh, a, new, a new way of thinking and a journey to get to this because you've got all the pieces that need to talk to each other to, um, to get the most out of your AI systems. That concludes my presentation. Um, if there are any questions, um, please put them in the Q&A or I can unmute you.